Hello everyone, this is Kathleen Tirani with Autism Brainstorm, www.autismbrainstorm.org. And this evening we have a special segment of The Author's Corner with Eric Estabrook. Eric Estabrook is a poet and a published author. Um, this evening, um, Eric is going to share with us from his newest book, An Autistic Poet Number 3, My Wondrous World. Um, An Autistic Poet 3, My Wondrous World, digs much deeper into nature using beautiful imagery to describe mind functions and behavior. Some of the turmoil and difficult environment around us is expressed in this 38-page collection. Um, Eric is going to share a little bit more about the book, but I will mention that there is a link to purchase the book very reasonably um, that travels with the video, and it's on the article page at Autism Brainstorm. Hi, Eric. Welcome. Thank you for sharing about your book. Oh, hey, Kathleen. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun endeavor. I always love talking about new projects. You mm -hmm. know, uh, helps me... Uh, Helps me settle my mind when I get a project out there, and I I really feel good about this latest book. Mm -hmm. uh, it it was pretty much a combination of all the poems I did the last four months. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's really focused. Um, has some really great poetry in there. Um, five different chapters, um, and. Every one of them has, not all of them have an autism theme, but every individual uh, poem mm -hmm. uh, really has a lot of meaning to them. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were from previous hangouts, um, previous shows. Mm -hmm. I wrote a, a pretty good amount of new material. Um, for this book, and the new material is very, very diverse, uh, very diverse and very, very innovative. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a 38-page ebook, so you have to put a lot of heavy words, a lot of heavy poems, a lot of heavy impact. If that's what I was going for, was to put the best that I've done so far out there, and mm -hmm. I, I don't. If it doesn't really need to be a hundred pages. Uh, if I do a 100-page book, sometimes it gets a little redundant in theme. Mm -hmm. I like every poem to be appreciated and singled out. If you do a little condensed version of your best stuff, mm -hmm. I feel like people can get a grander picture because, like I said, if I do a 100-page, 100-page-plus book, sometimes I end up repeating myself with similar themes and mm -hmm. similar poems. Well, I have to agree with you what you said at the beginning, and that is that um, you have 38 poems, and even though they all have, tie into the fact that they're written um, for the community, they're all incredibly different. You have a very wide um, style. You have lots of different type, lots of different styles going on. You have lots of different things going on, um, and quite a bit of depth. In your poetry, there it's, it's it's you have a whole saga contained within you know. I'm very partial to your poems, I'll have to say, but mm -hmm. um, there's there's a, there's always a fully developed theme or story, and um, I think that y you have it priced, which is just pretty incredible, at two dollars for a very interesting body of work. And um, I just I think it's it's a real bargain, and I think that um, I, I would definitely like to see more, and even maybe publish a commentary on your poetry. What mm -hmm. do you think about doing that sometime? Have you thought about that? Well, doing the shows with you, the outspeaks kind of lit a fire under me to like. <laughs> If, if I know I'm gonna read it to people, or if mm -hmm. I know people are gonna be seeing it. Mm -hmm. The poems turn out better for me. It seems like I've trained my mind to say, hey, people are going to be reading this. You mm -hmm. can't just slap something together on the page. Right. And so I so, try so, to... So are you saying that it helps with your critical process? Yeah. It, it definitely has helped Good. with my critical process. Good. Um, 
you know, poetry for me is 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 very very essential to being. And so when I when I write something like you said mm -hmm. to avoid redundancy, I'm gonna explain that something out as far as I can and make it something using words that I haven't used before, descriptions I haven't used before, mm -hmm. and you just never run out. It's an endless pool, you know. Yeah. Um, as long as you're still learning and doing in life, mm -hmm. as, as far as I'm concerned, I can create something new because, you know, just look at how many different words are in the English language. I'm never going to stop learning <laughs> words in the English language. It's been developed for, you know, centuries in thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Well, this is certainly your medium, Eric, poetry. Poetry is mm -hmm. just a paintbrush in your hand. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, of the 38 poems, you said you're going to share one of those with us. Yeah. And, and this, let me... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. This yeah. Is, is one of the new ones that I put in the book. There was a number of new ones that I put in the book to keep it fresh Mm -hmm. Keep it exciting, and also uh, keep keep the page count up because you know uh, I want to make sure that if I'm selling something, you don't get the same package. I'm getting I'm giving someone something new as well. This is the third installment of of the autistic poet series, so mm -hmm. you might find some similar poems, some similar styles. But these poems, they're totally different than any of the autistic poet poems. It's more of, it's more creative. It's more getting into just the richness that I think with. Mm -hmm. It's more getting into creativity. There's so many different themes in in this book. Mm -hmm. uh, poems like Autistic Runaway that talk about kids that run away during with sensory issues and sometimes the really negative consequences. Mm -hmm. There's poems about shutting yourself out from the world and its consequences. Mm -hmm. And so I get really specific in certain poems. Mm -hmm. I don't always want to be poetic creative in the in the essence that I leave everything general mm -hmm. and just use pretty words. Well, that doesn't work for everyone, you know. Um, That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. So, what are your? What you're, would you say that what you're doing is you're giving? I'll borrow from Stephen, one of Stephen Shore's books, giving sort of a glimpse from behind a wall, giving a snapshot of if there is any sort of communication difficulties or if there's any expressive difficulties. Um, are you giving a view of that through any of your poems? Oh well. Um, Many people I know when they read Autistic Runaway, for example, mm -hmm. it's from the perspective of the kid running away and running into a very ugly scene. Mm -hmm. And it seems like when I get into the mind and behaviors of an autistic child, I can kind of see it from their point of view. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard people say, yeah, that's probably how it would happen. And that's probably what they would be thinking. So as far as my mindset, when I mm -hmm. get in that mode of, of expressing something so specific that I'm expressing it like a narration, mm -hmm. when I do that, I think most people realize that they can see the autistic behaviors in the poetry because I put mm -hmm. different autistic behaviors in, in my poetry, describing different autistic behaviors. Um, in Autistic Runaway, I describe sensory overload. Um, in Existence Away from Humania, I, I want to, I write about, you know, shutting yourself off from the world and its positive and negative aspects. Um, in On the Golden Wings of Angels, I talk about what true bravery is and what it means to really be brave in your life because bravery to me is taking it up a notch. You have to do something that people don't expect from you. Hmm. You, know? mm -hmm. you have to do something of superhuman character or, or you can just um, do something simple, um, do something simple that provides a lot of impact. 
Um, in the, on the golden wings of angels, I'm talking about specific brave behaviors that I think are beautiful and exemplary, but at the mm -hmm. same time, just listening to someone who's in a crisis is being extremely brave, mm -hmm. or just just doing something as simple as thanking someone uh, for any kind thing is being brave as far as I'm concerned. But in the poem on the golden wings of angels, I get into specific bravery behavior that I think is something important and, and uh, in relation to society, something people should look at and say, you know, um, that was really something. I can't believe that person was that strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that your poetry and, and your perspectives are as varied and wide as the autism spectrum, as the human spectrum. So you're drawing from all types of situations and um, it's just, it, I just, I think we should read a poem, that's what I think. Okay. And, uh, I will. Yeah, and, but uh, and, this is just it's 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 38 poems all incredibly different, all very deeply moving in different ways on different levels. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready and, to read now and this okay. poem is called I Think About You. Mm -hmm. It's on page 27 of the ebook. Mm -hmm. Luscious memories melodies pluck right like cherries placed upon a solemn page to live between spaces. Her fragrance like a lemon sunset with highlights of ginger and bulbs of lilac. She enhanced every sense of mine, a song burn and penning rhyme. She, she took apart a gaze and made it a memorial, mo, memorial picture. How she lifted every bit of humanity with grace and on her page I was a guest fixture. Everything was beautiful, beautiful but of Herself, she wasn't sure. Every mirror assuredly would not would have reflected a goddess smile, a sacred allure, but she never saw the same picture that everyone else saw. To her, she was an anomaly in a perfect world. I told her one day it was only perfect because of her, how she dreams of the lacquer of reality, restoring time's old furniture. She was all in disbelief, but her world became such rich worlds. And we all pin blossom, and all we pin blossoms again. There's no crevice in which it goes unhurt. Wow. Mm -hmm. So good. yeah, I did. Um, all the newer poems on mm -hmm. this on this book are really new. I mean, um, <laughs> almost brand new. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. so it's amazing because I wrote them all on the same day. Um, but like you like you said, and like I understand, they're all so different. Um, I was worried about you know doing just one day's worth of poems because sometimes a person writing in one day can only get mm -hmm. that day of feeling out. You know, this day was like like a a common mind would be like it would end up being like a journal writing and it, how the day was. You know, um, well, sometimes inspiration acts that way. Sometimes it behaves like that. Yes. Sometimes it takes a very long and protracted process, and sometimes it just comes all at once in a rush. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely wouldn't question this. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to take a look at this, take it apart, and share with us um, phrase by phrase? Uh, well, um, the beginning, luscious memories, melodies, pluck ripe like cherries. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of thought, you know, well, that's what happens when someone reads one of your poems. It's like picking fruit from a tree, you know. Uh, a person sees the best fruit they like, uh, something that really speaks to them. Mm -hmm. one that's like the most plump or juicy looking so they they pluck their their uh, poem what they want from you out and from there they really um, they really get an experience out of it and so uh, the first you know uh, 
something I learned right away in poetry is how you start the poem shapes everything that goes on in the poem. Mm -hmm. A bad beginning is chaotic, at, at the, to say the very least. Mm -hmm. It is damaging to the rest of the poem. If I don't write something good in the beginning, I'm not going to write something good at the end. And right. if, if I don't start out with something eye-catching or gripping, mm -hmm. I always trash it because... So that I, sets the framework, would you say that? Yeah, um, you have mm -hmm. to start out with something eye-catching mm -hmm. because if someone's not immediately taken by something, mm -hmm. uh, they won't. Their mind closes to everything else you present. Even if I started a poem out, say for example, I started out a poem like an I am poem, and and just start out, I am this or that, I am the sun, the moon, the stars. Mm -hmm. Say I started out a poem like that, which that's the last thing I want to do is start out with I am because I really dislike that whole personification to start out a poem. But, um, you know, if someone's someone could think from the beginning, you could shut your audience down and put them off from the beginning starting off with I am. Because they're thinking automatically, this poet is thinking about themselves entirely. He's not writing for my entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I always start out a poem thinking about the reader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's your style. That's your style. Now, I've read some very good poems, actually, that start out that way. That uh, um, when the writer can make you feel as though they are expressing what's happening within you. It, 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 they can write in such a way that that I am, you, it resonates within you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that might be a little bit different. Yeah. Well, not, not to totally knock the whole personification I am mm -hmm. rhythm, but there's very few poets that can make that work, you know, most of the, you have to admit that most of the time when it does, when it gets done, it ends up like someone professing how godly they are, you know. Because I guess that, that that could be inherent in that. That could be a, a uh, trap to fall into. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't think I've ever. I think I might have done I am poems when I was in high school mm -hmm. once in a while, but. Not to the point where I start, you know, professing how cool I am. That's I'll let other people do that. Um, I already okay. think I'm cool, so I don't need to write it in a poem. So right. Well, you tend to tell stories. You mm -hmm. tend to tell very deep level stories, and maybe that just doesn't lend itself to the I am uh, style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you have to realize there has to be a progression. All, all nursery rhymes used to start with once upon a time. And, mm -hmm. and, like, and like you said with the I Am poem, there, there's people that work brilliantly within that method. Yes, yes. But um, it's not the end-all, be-all to start with. People melded no. that, mm -hmm. came up with different beginnings, and sometimes it turns out much better than if they started out a fairy tale with Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we're, we're, let's take, let me go back here. Let's take another look. Let's move through your poem. Placed upon a solemn page to live again between spaces. That's one of my favorite um, metaphors. It's, Life happens between the words. <laughs> mm -hmm. Words are wonderful things, but in 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 one and they can be weak. They can mm -hmm. be weak, um, but they're all that we have mm -hmm. to communicate. And some of the subtleties, uh, ha uh, most of the subtlety happens between the words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the whole point of. Of to live again between spaces is I was leading up to the part where I'm talking about you know how enthralled I was to be part of to be the 
a muse on another poet's page that I thought was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I get into, well, you know, I'm in her world now, and I think right. that's great, but her reality is kind of sad, I mean, you know. Yeah. She, she thinks, you know, the person that I'm talking about doesn't love themselves, you know. Right. So, right. so it's kind of like I'm enthralled by her world, but her real world needs to be fixed because mm. she sees beauty just not in herself. And there's people that do right by that. I won't do right like that. I won't, you know, it's not about any specific person or everything. I've been a, a guest fixture on a lot of pages. Right. But I just, it was taking advantage of, I think it's such a crime to have a beautiful expression that you do and not think that you're part of that sequence. Mm-hmm. It kind of crushes me a little bit to know that people that show beauty don't mm -hmm. always see their own beauty. Mm -hmm. That was, in essence, the summation of the poem. Hmm. So this is, is I'm asking, I'm not telling, this is um, your experience of uh, being part of this other poet's world for a moment mm -hmm. and yes. um, how it struck you. Mm -hmm. She was all in disbelief, but her world became such rich worlds and all we pen blossoms again. There's no crevice in which it goes unheard. Yeah, that could you give some clarity to that last phrase? Um. I'm basically equating it to I'm equating it to having I'm equating you know basically her vision as something that is ingrained in everyone else something that has so much power that it ingrades itself into everything Mm -hmm. Kind of like a shout into a canyon. Well, everybody in that canyon can hear you. And so I think that uh, most people when they write um, don't really have a sense of how far it extends into how many people. And just mm -hmm. the effect that it has by that act. Mm -hmm. So, so ripples, uh, ripples in a pond, so to speak. I was kind of just saying, you know, uh, it, it was in reference to her world. I'm basically so, saying that uh, her world was good enough to shape other people's impressions enough that it's everywhere. I mean, you can see the results. Just like if someone helps someone, uh, helps someone survive, helps someone live, in, in modern day society or life, it, it causes a chain reaction, like you said, the ripple effect. It's mm -hmm. not in vain. I wanted poets to know at the end of this that it's not in vain. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know who all reads my poetry. Mm -hmm. I end up assuming that a lot of people that I don't know read my poetry. Right, for sure, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking at. Um the line that says how she lifted every bit of humanity with grace. What a beautiful tribute. What a beautiful tribute. Are you going to tell this person that this poem is basically about your experience on that, uh, on that other page? Um, you know... Uh, it is a beautiful tribute, really. I know, but um, maybe it's better kept as a tribute. Gotcha. I mean... Yeah, uh, I understand. It's, I don't know, it's just one of those things, I don't want to, I don't want to freak someone out, mm -hmm. or, or, you know. Um, or have it be taken the wrong way, perhaps. Overstep my boundaries a little bit, you know. Right, right. Well, it, it really is a lovely tribute to just the experience of another, of another um, gifted artist. Mm -hmm. So, that's beautiful in and of itself. 
Mm -hmm. So this is just an example of the poetry that we can expect from reading. Um, your, let me see, let me pull up the cover again. An mm -hmm. autistic poet, number three. Mm -hmm. Now, so there must be an autistic poet one and two. Yes, there is an autistic poet one and two. <laughs> um, and those can also be found on Lulu? Um, it's kind of interesting because I sent them to different corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, two, is, two is on Amazon um, oh, with okay. Create Space, and one's on Lulu. So oh. the, the natural thing people do is Autistic Poet 3, how come you didn't publish a second one and then you go to your third one? What's wrong with you? <laughs> So, so, so I'm like, well, there's <laughs> one, two, three. You're going to have to go on over to Amazon.com to see two. Okay. So and, then what, what we'll do is um, I have the link to this one on Lulu. So we'll just put one, two, and three within this article that will travel with this with this segment so people can find those. Yes. Yeah. Either so, way, it's either, either way, um, I, I always like people to read um, all three of them, of course, because mm -hmm. they really go together. Um, mm -hmm. The weird thing about it was um, an autistic poet one was ranked really high on Lulu in the top 20. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so a lot of people read it. A lot of people liked it. But, you know, in hindsight, it was kind of flat and compared to this book, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so your, your, your writing has probably just greatly evolved. When, when was book one written? How long ago? It was written about three years ago. There's a lot of... Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I was going to say, you've had quite a chance to develop your craft over the last three years because you're very prolific. Mm -hmm. You write very often. Yeah. Well, um, it's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, you have one and two. Um, one has the best title as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Mindscapes, Leaps, Leaps of Faith, and Chasms. Oh, that's and, nice, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, who would want to pick that up? I mean, but... You know, at the same time, it's the perfect title for that book. Uh -huh. You know, I go through such highs and I go through such lows in that book that it sums it up perfectly that, you know, I start out, you know, jumping through different frames of my mind. It's mm -hmm. kind of, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like going through the mind of someone that's bipolar, you know. You get every every different mood, every different <laughs> feeling I was in. It's it's like uh, you could probably tell what time I had my coffee by it. You know, uh, there are some chasms in there. You know, mm -hmm. I'm telling the reader that and look out. Mm -hmm. I throw in a couple curveballs. You know, it's okay. not all oneness and beauty. Okay. I have some chasms in there. And I'm also reaching out to my audience in that book very often. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very apt title. Um, An Autistic Poet 2, I don't really know how well it did. I thought it would do well because it was on Amazon. It's one of those big question marks for me. Mm -hmm. to, to this day, I really don't know whether it was... Uh, a good idea to publish with Create Space because they don't really update you on anything. They mm -hmm. don't you don't really know where you're at with them and their contract is like twenty pages long. Hmm. So you had an overall better experience with Lulu.com, is that right? Well yeah. Um uh -huh. I was mad at Lulu for a little while because they they basically deleted all the PDF files and I didn't know how to make an EPUB. I couldn't make an EPUB. So all uh -huh. my books basically got trashed and then they brought the PDFs back. And last, when I uploaded this book I was amazed. Uh -huh. um, you know, if you submit a book to them in the past, uh -huh. 
you would read in your email a day later that your files were done and everything like that. This time it took like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So they probably streamlined their process. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm going to show the uh, cover one more time. That was a beautiful poem that you shared with us, I think, about you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's one of those things. I can't this, screen share. Um, you know, you're familiar with some of my poems where... It's stuck, Eric. I'm sorry. We're, okay. We're here. Well, you're familiar with some of my poems that, you know, you know that if I do a one-word title, kind of what you're getting by now, because I've done it with mm -hmm. different poems on Poetic Outspeak, right? Right. Um, my more abstract poems mm -hmm. and some of my more creative poems are the one-word poems where I describe creatively an uh, object or a scene. Mm -hmm. Like you, you might be able to remember uh, when I read windmills or fountains on, on Poetic Outspeak, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I do those poems, uh, poems like Sunsets and Moons, Fountains, windmills, mm -hmm. clouds. Clouds, there's a, statues, there's, yeah. There's, yeah, see, those clouds and statues are some of the new poems mm -hmm. in the ebook. When I do those one-word poems, mm -hmm. I find myself uh, kind of like, you know, feeling more artsy, more creative with it because mm -hmm. uh, I think... I enjoy the one-word poems the best just mm -hmm. because I'm taking something and reinventing it, you know? Mm -hmm. and They're very open-ended. I'm, I'm just looking at a few of these that you're talking about, the one-word poems, and mm -hmm. it just, it's like um, a sailboat, and you catch the wind, and it just takes off and does its own thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I really like that, Kathleen. Um, like, for example, did you just read Statues? I just passed it, yeah. Uh -huh. I glanced yeah, through that. Statues is a good example about how out of place I sometimes feel in this world. Mm -hmm. There's a pun in there about um, where it says uh, Perseus sits there tweeting his life away. Um, mm -hmm. I was speaking about, like, a statue of Perseus, and he's supposed to rescue me from my world and take me to a world that I belong to where people fight and are noble and everything's gravy for me. And then Perseus decides to tweet about, you know, <laughs> killing, killing the Minotaur for hours and hours and kind of ruins my dream. Right. Can I read just that, just that uh, uh, phrase? Go ahead. That one section says, tell me I'm not a relic. I've strength and a method that matters. Over here sits Perseus. He doesn't fight. He just sits on his iPhone and tweets away his life. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. That is interesting. You take such an old reference and bring it right here into the moment, right into the now. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's basically what Perseus... Perse I'll tell you what, in, in the latest Clash of the Titans, he would have been at, better off tweeting his life away. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. Well, good stuff, Eric. We've been talking more than a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, excellent, excellent book. Your third book. I wish I could bring it back up, but I cannot. Where Our mm -hmm. Google Hangout is stuck. Um, but the book is An Autistic Poet 3, My Wondrous World. And it has just a, a wide variety of poems by this author who is on the autism spectrum, Eric Estabrook. And I'll definitely make sure to have links to um, Volume 1 and Volume 2 as well. Okay. Eric, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again, Kathleen. I love your medium. You always have great ideas. And you're just fun to be on with. So Thank you so much, and I appreciate your talent and your time. Um, so everyone who's watching, thank you so much. 
Um, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Goodbye.